Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I am your host Jason Lippert, here with a review of the Mardi Gras from Carnival Cruise Line. It may share a name with the brand's first ever ship, but it is quite the departure from the 1972 vessel and even Carnival's more recent ships with a revised layout and much upgraded experience overall. To start, let's take a look at Mardi Gras specifications. Its onboard lifestyle is standard. It is the first in Carnival's Excel class of ships, and even though it was supposed to launch in 2020, it actually set sail in 2021. It measures in at 180,000 tons, with a normal passenger count of 5,282, resulting in a slightly more crowded passenger space ratio of 34.08. First up with accommodations, we personally stayed in a balcony stateroom, which although narrower than on previous Carnival ships, still features lots of good storage, albeit without a center coffee table any longer. Our teddy bear friends were about the only thing small enough to rest on this sort of pseudo ledge, but naturally they did approve and appreciate the bed more. As humans, we were happy to see the reading lights at either side of the bed also include a handy USB charging port, as does the vanity desk across the way feature another welcome pair, three regular electrical outlets, plus a second USB pair. Our balcony itself was quite deep with plenty of room for two chairs, a table, and then some. The only thing that was really a noticeable downgrade was the bathroom. Showers are manageable, but the toilet and sink compartment are far too narrow for comfort, especially compared to Carnival's past ample bathrooms. Meanwhile, a sampling of other available amenities includes Havana interior staterooms and other such Havana labeled cabins and suites, which come with exclusive access to the Havana pool, as well as outdoor bar and deck off the forward side of the ship. The bar and dance floor on the inside are available to everyone, but this pool and incredible view are available only to guests therein. Another set of accommodations with private perks are the family harbor ones, such as ocean view staterooms. Available exclusively to those passengers is the family harbor lounge, with additional room to gather, watch TV, and play games, as well as a dining room and buffet line just to themselves. Then, of course, there are the suites on board, the best of which is the Carnival Excel Presidential Suite, complete with a separate living room and bedroom. By the way, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when our new videos are released. Such corner suites even come with expansive balconies with loungers galore, plus a private hot tub. Just look at the kind of views you can expect while relaxing in the soothing water. When you're ready to book your Mardi Gras cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Vacations, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get a complimentary quote, just click on the link right here, or call the number or email the address displayed below. Heading over to activities, the bulk along with entertainment are included, but the exclusive Loft 19 comes with a fee for the cabanas. However, Excel level suite guests get access to the remainder, including a quiet infinity style pool for free. Or, complimentary for adults only, is still the Serenity Deck, which includes a pool on this ship that gets much busier by comparison. Otherwise, there are lots of loungers, some with better shade to go around, plus an additional two whirlpools, one on either side of the ship. Continuing on the upper deck with the most impressive activity on board is Bolt, Ultimate Sea Coaster, another rare attraction that costs extra. I've been predicting for years that it was only a matter of time before a cruise line attempts to put a full-fledged roller coaster on a ship, and Carnival was the first to do so. I must admit the ride was more thrilling than I expected, and we had to go back to ride it twice. If anything, I just wish the ride was longer because it is a blast, overlooking the rest of the ship below, on sea days or in port. Virtual queuing in particular makes this one very easy to plan for, without the need to physically wait in line so we hope this feature sticks around. In the middle of the coaster track is the popular Carnival Waterworks complex of water slides and splash park. There's a free fall body slide, standard twister, forward facing mat variety, and two kitty racers, as well as a classic dunk bucket. And off to the side is another perennial favorite of mini golf. for low-key fun for those less inclined to ride the roller coaster and water slides.
outdoor table games, a sports court, and ropes course high above are also along for the ride. Including a zipline section cantilevered over the side of the ship. Here is just a taste of what challenges await along the route, all while safely tethered, of course. Then one deck below is where children and kids at heart will find the Warehouse Video Arcade, with loads of vibrant games to choose from. Just next door is Circle C, a colorful club dedicated to tweens, including spaces for video gaming and other hands-on activities. And on the opposite side of the ship is Club 02, just for teens. with a more grown-up vibe inside, as well as its own terrace outside. And wrapping around it all is an expansive sun deck to bathe in the rays or hide under several shade structures. Just be mindful that smoking is permitted on the starboard side of the stern. Otherwise, the terrace decks marvelously flank the pool below which further includes a large whirlpool, plus an additional shaded hut to sit under and get your feet wet. But it's just one of several pools on board. The tides pool, for instance, overlooks the stern from high above, with its own set of whirlpools. And the patio pool and lanai down below overlook the wake. With the Havana Pool relocated from here since previous ships, the patio is now freely accessible to all guests. And it extends as a wraparound promenade deck from the starboard midship where outdoor dining, the watering hole, and two side-facing whirlpools are found to the stern. and around to the port side where the complimentary Guy's Pig and Anchor Barbecue and El Fresco Specialty Dining is available. Meanwhile, inside is the newly located Guest Services and Carnival Adventures desks for access away from the atrium. And further forward is the Pixels Gallery to pick up photo purchases. On this ship, there are additionally two dream studios to schedule portrait sessions. Then on Deck 7, the Mardi Gras Casino has been vastly improved, thanks to being fully enclosed now, thus finally eliminating the proliferation of secondhand cigarette smoke from extending beyond the gambling area. Of course, the fun shops have also been reprised, that are located in various spots around the ship, including the tempting Cherry on Top candy shop. Nearby, a painting nicely pays homage to Carnival's original Mardi Gras, as does a wall panel and ceremonial coin display that places the storied heritage front and center. Farther forward is the Cloud9 Fitness Center, with ellipticals, treadmills, and more, encompassing a motion studio. And on the other side, the Cloud9 Spa entrance takes guests down to Deck 5, where they'll find the ship's salon, relaxation room, treatment rooms, and thermal suite, consisting of a salt therapy room, dry sauna, steam rooms, experience showers, and Thalassotherapy Bowl. Thankfully it's bigger than before, but should be larger still for such a massive ship. 
Rounding out the activities on Deck 4 is the Camp Ocean Kids Facility, which is now conveniently located on the same deck as the Family Harbor Lounge and State Rooms. Dr. Seuss Bookville is once again a highlight. As are common areas and spaces dedicated to three age ranges. Penguins for children 2 to 5, stingrays for those 6 to 8, and sharks for those 9 to 11. Moving on to dining, there are two included main dining rooms, starting with the Grand Double Decker Pond Restaurant. Exhibiting Carnival's welcome, matured aesthetic versus tacky restaurants of the past. The second is the smaller, single level Flamingo Restaurant with a cozier mid century modern dining room that is perhaps only missing a vinyl turntable to complete the look. Food wise, the main dining rooms still serve the likes of the line's signature melting chocolate cake. Nestled in between is the new interactive Carnival Kitchen concept which features educational cooking stations as well as a dining area. Or alternatively, Emerald's Bistro 1396 is a fresh specialty option for casual breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Wherein you order from the counter and specialties are then served tableside. As well as delicious morning starters like these. The gumbo was good, but had a flavor profile closer to a beef stew. But Emerald's signature jambalaya was excellent. As was the sweet bananas foster. Also part of the themed French Quarter District, befitting the ship's name, is the Fortune Teller Bar. Which is similar to the Alchemy Bar, but with amped up beverages, such as the Crystal Ball. Specialty coffees are still available from Java Blue Cafe, which is now selling mugs featuring individual ships like Starbucks Destination Series. And excellent added cost pastries still include the marvelous guava cream cheese filled donut. Even though the atrium has been dramatically reconfigured on Mardi Gras, as I'll soon showcase in the entertainment portion of the video, its center stage bar continues to serve the venue's first floor. And its second floor is covered by the Grand View Bar, a great spot for watching shows, as well as passing scenery when the windows are open. The aforementioned Alchemy Bar is still going strong on the ship. For those looking to be prescribed an alcoholic or non-alcoholic elixir. And my friend and fellow Jason is still crafting the best of the best here. The space has also been expanded with added seating. Even though deck plans incorrectly illustrate a bulkhead dividing Alchemy Bar from the Steakhouse, a pathway does in fact connect the watering hole to Fahrenheit 555, including its group dining table. Dishes here remain consistently good across the fleet, including tuna tartare, 18 ounce spice rubbed USDA prime ribeye, and sides like gourmet mac and cheese. Several crystal staircases dot the ship. Climbing to deck 8 on one is where another specialty dining room is available. Sharing talented celebrity chef Sodaman from corporate cousin Holland America line is the elegant Rudy Sea Grill, where the following seafood courses impress. From scallops to tuna, bisque, and crab stuffed lobster. Parked outside is a Vespa marking the start of La Piazza, 
grouping together several Italian eateries. Piazza Panini is a new complimentary offering serving deli and hot press sandwiches. Mine was tasty, but could have used more time in the oven to warm up its core a bit more. Going down the line is Pizzeria del Capitano in its new central location. Savory pies like pepperoni are still some of the best at sea. Passengers looking for more to drink than a complimentary lemonade can go to Bar de la Rosa for bellinis and all sorts of other cocktails before reaching the end of the drive at the resident Fiat in Cucina del Capitano. The specialty Italian restaurant is now about the only venue on board that aesthetically borders on Kitchi, but is great for showcasing Carnival's seafaring history. While dishes like Caprese and Arancini are very good, it was the captain's favorite delicious pasta that really stood out here. Making the transition to the Grand Central area of the ship are even more restaurants. Banzai Sushi is back. With a bar and indoor seating. As well as a secluded outdoor corner that shouldn't be missed. as is Banzai Teppanyaki, with three action stations and the usual fiery showmanship. Serving and cooking standards like spicy tuna, shrimp and pork belly, miso soup, fried rice, filet mignon, and a creative chocolate bento box. But our singular favorite restaurant on board is the newly introduced Chebang, As a replacement for GG Asian Kitchen, the dining venue serves a combination of Chinese and Mexican courses, and all are outstanding and perfect for mixing and matching. From pot stickers and queso fundido to steak ranchero and kung pao chicken. Side dishes are equally satisfying. As are of course desserts. A charge can be expected for dinner at the indoor Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse, which is equal parts brew house brewing beers right on board. The games are free, as are lunches at the aforementioned outdoor Guy's Pig and Anchor Barbecue. And the smoky meats are just great. Off to the side of the brew house is the Heroes Tribute Lounge. Home to one of the ship's complimentary swirls, soft serve ice cream and yogurt stations, and more importantly, a bar space in honor of military personnel. Back up on deck 16 is where the Tides Pool Bar is located. as well as another free swirl station for more ice cream and frozen yogurt. And opposite that is the new Big Chicken. Instead of the pizzeria being positioned here, Carnival's CFO, or Chief Fun Officer, Shaquille O'Neal, has his complimentary eatery. And there's also a showcase of other locations on land and sea, including a preview of the upcoming Carnival celebration. Altogether, it's a great alternative to Guy's Burger Joint, serving awesome sandwiches at breakfast and lunch including the chicken and biscuit, and Uncle Jerome for Nashville hot chicken, seen here augmented with a slice of pepper jack cheese, 
In the middle of the pool deck is still the classic Lido Marketplace buffet, with tons of indoor seating, but a reduced selection of food stations, which is fine actually given all the other choices. Here I enjoyed serviceable jerk chicken and exceptional shawarma. Also poolside is the returning seafood shack. For added cost selection, such as a tasty bread bowl, filled with clam chowder as well as a bucket of fried shrimp and fries. New off to the side is a trio of Street Eats windows, serving free top of size bites, similar to how the taste bar used to on earlier ships, including these tasty morsels. Louis Guana Cantina has also been reprised, complete with its free burrito, taco, and salsa bars. Missing, however, is the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar. Instead, Red Frog Rum Bar has doubled up to become the two-story Red Frog Tiki Bar on deck 16 and 17. And it has gone full tiki in the best of ways. with all kinds of tiki paraphernalia and themed drinks. And fear not, because Guy's Burger Joint is still on deck, just moved up one level, where it has more room to spread out, along with a third Swirls location. The sizzling burgers are great. And the pig patty with bacon is still my favorite. The Serenity Deck has one more bar, as well as the Fresh Creations window for custom salads to finish up the food and drink on board. And lastly for entertainment, said atrium and center stage are now cleverly placed asymmetrically, making a triple-decker expanse of windows the focal point during the day, and a wall of LEDs the backdrop for shows at night. The resulting hybrid venue is amazing. and hosts everything from dancing and live music, with an extraordinary house band at that, to game shows, variety acts, and production shows. such as the expertly remounted celestial strings, which as you can see, just shines in the new space. On a smaller scale, but still impressive with its own vaulted ceiling, the Brass Magnolia is another bar on board. But also a live music venue for excellent jazz sets. And no carnival ship would be complete without its Piano Bar 88. For playful sing-alongs. Given how popular it is, it's also good that the always hilarious Punchliner Comedy Club has its own venue on Mardi Gras. Where most of the adult shows are presented.
The secondary Limelight Lounge is where other family-friendly comedy shows are held, along with classic trivia games from the Fun Squad. By comparison to the center stage atrium area, the Mardi Gras Theater is now rather lackluster, as only a double-decker venue with little styling. Still, shows here like Interactive Magic, Family Feud Live, and other playlist productions remain excellent as you can see. The Havana Bar is also where live music is a perfect invitation to dance the night away. And Dive in Movies Back of the Pool is a great spot to watch films like the super funny Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Let's wrap up with our final pros and cons. Just a handful of negatives include the surprisingly small, standard stateroom bathrooms. Even though it is bigger than on the last class of Carnival ships, the spa thermal suite, and the last therapy pool in particular, could still be bigger. And the unusual layout is quite a departure from others in the fleet, but mostly a win once you get used to it. And the positives are certainly the truly thrilling Bolt roller coaster, impressive atrium and center stage venue, and the expansive list of dining and drink options on Mardi Gras. Thanks so much for watching! If you would, as it really does help support us, Please like this video with a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos, watch our other ones, and visit popularcruising.com.